online retail kind of hits critical mass when you hit 1% of retail. I think in Nigeria, my sense is we will get to that um, inflection point at some point over the next two or three years. So it means that for a while, it's going to be a very difficult, long journey. It's going to take a while. In the United States, online retail has hit 12% of retail. In, uh, in places like Russia, it's just starting to approach sort of 4 5%. Here, I think we are well below the 1% level, and it's going to take some time. But that said, if you look at it, it is, uh, if you look at the overall pie of retail, we're not starting conga.com in an environment where there is a big box retailer or a, a convenience store retailer at every corner. So retail as an, ent an entire sector, whether online or offline, is still very small in Nigeria. So I think there's an opportunity for retailers like ourselves and others too. There are many in Lagos that are exper uh, experimenting with e-commerce and we encourage that. Um, I think there's wider scope for us to grow much quicker. Now, why did you decide to run an online store you know, instead of building a regular retail store? There are some features of online that make it quite different from offline and make it particularly interesting. So if you think about it for us, our store is on the internet, which means that everybody from an individual in Lagos to an individual as far away as Adamawa State in Nigeria is looking at our product catalog. So our ability to distribute our catalog across Nigeria is greatly eased by the internet. And so it just uh, it increases your range of distribution and your reach dramatically in a way that a physical store that is confined to a particular physical place or geography just cannot um, have that reach. But beyond that, there are some other features also. Because you're online and because you can work with suppliers in interesting ways, where a physical store has constraints and may have only you know, 10, 20, 30,000 products or SKU in the store, because you're online, you're basically afforded infinite selection. And I think the aim of Conga one day is for us to have literally as much selection as any retailer in Africa. So you can carry everything. The fundamental structure or business model of online retail is very different from offline and much more attractive. And I think it's one that will proliferate much faster than offline. From what you just said, you just listed the um, advantages, you know, online shopping offers the owner. Now, what other benefits are there for the consumers? Our retail coverage is not great. There are some offline brick and mortar retailers that are doing their best to serve Nigerians. But if you look at the service, um, sorry, the traffic situation in, in Lagos, for example, think how much time it takes for you to get from your home to a shopping mall. You're caught in traffic. You get there ultimately. You're not even sure of selection. You're not sure of what you will find. Um, the entire experience of shopping, shopping offline for the Nigerian consumer is just, uh, I think, tedious at, at best. Now contrast that to Conga. You're on your mobile phone or you're at your desk at home or, or at the office and you can multitask. You can go online, you can put all these things in your cart um, and you can get it delivered to you at your office in Lagos many times within 24 hours, oftentimes, um, often same day. So there are some things that brick and mortar will always do better than online, and we have to be able to admit that. In a brick and mortar store, you can pick up that product, you can actually look at it, and then decide and determine that this is exactly what you want. That hasn't stopped the march of e-commerce, but if you think about it, we've introduced some things into uh, our service that deal with that problem. And I think the most profound one, first of all, is pay on delivery. So in the most critical cities in Nigeria, Lagos first, but soon Abuja and Port Harcourt, you can basically order something, get it delivered to your door, before you determine that you're going to pay for it. And then you can hang on to it and then call us back and say, look, I want to send this thing back. And we'll actually, um, with our own effort and resources, come back to you and get it back. So really, if you think about it, it's a risk-free proposition for the customer. Um, I think uh, Nigerians are also sort of uh, showing that it's not true that uh, Africans are not ad adopters of technology. I think Nigerians um, adopt te technology as fast as some of those that we, cons con uh, we look at like the Japanese. I think you see that happening with uh, the spread of, uh, uh, of, uh, of mobile and data and web applications. Now what factors do you think should be put in place for online retailing to thrive in Nigerian economy? As fast as we want to grow, the truth of the matter is that we are, we are constrained by environmental realities. So the first thing is that broadband penetration in Nigeria needs to increase. We write broadband as they lay those pipes. So you can think of broad, what, what, the telco comp, what the telecom and the wireless and mobile companies are doing as laying pipes. They are providing those pipes. And those pipes have not hit 
uh, really any significant part of Nigeria, in spite of their best efforts. They've tried really hard. Um, we are the the oil or the, you know, the, the drinks or whatever you want to say that flow through those pipes. So if there's no pipes, we can't flow. So it's going to take a while, I think, before you see broadband penetration really take off in Nigeria. And then beyond that, this is such an exciting time for this country. And the government has to invest very aggressively um, and put whatever legislation has to be put in place to enable um, the infrastructure to grow, especially the rail lines. Um, there's too much pressure um, on our roads right now from freight. And those are the platforms that we ride, um, even without, if you don't consider broadband. I think more sort of in terms of a long horizon, we are a very um, intellect intensive business. Um, there's a lot of thought and, and, and um, analysis that goes into this business. And we've ignored our education sector for way too long. Everybody that you see in Conga has gone through rigorous interview processes. We really hire the best of the best of the best. And we found that, that to be we found that to be very difficult in Nigeria, not because there aren't people that are smart. I mean, I think Nigerians are some of the smartest people in the world, but our government has just not done a great job historically. I think they're correcting that now, but I think historically we haven't done a very good job of educating our people, and we have to turn that around very quickly. And that's not only to the benefit of conga.com or online shopping, but you know, we're entering a knowledge economy. The world now is a knowledge-driven economy. Nobody cares how much oil you have. Um, and I, so I think that that's one big thing that the government has to do, and only the government can do.